We're short at stories. Today we're talking about Gerald's game, in which a woman struggles to survive when her bedtime games go fatally wrong. Jesse and Gerald arrive for some downtime at a secluded lake house in Fairhope, Alabama. While Gerald takes Viagra, Jesse feeds a stray dog outside, but leaves the door open when she re-enters the house. Jesse puts on a new pair of panties, places the tag on a shelf above the bed, and practices sexy poses. Gerald takes a second Viagra and sets his glass of water on the same shelf. He handcuffs Jesse's wrists with a set of handcuffs attached to each of the bedposts. She seems a little surprised by this, but goes along with it. He begins to enact a rape fantasy, telling her to scream for help because he knows no one will hear her. She plays along half-heartedly, but soon becomes uncomfortable and tells him to stop and uncuff her. He replies, what if I don't want to? After a heated argument in which he accuses her of not even trying to rekindle their relationship, Gerald dies of a heart attack, falling to the floor and leaving Jesse trapped in the handcuffs. A few hours pass. The dog comes through the open door and Jesse tries to shoo it away, but it bites a piece out of Gerald's arm and eats it. Gerald gets up and starts talking, reacting to the missing skin and muscle on his arm, but Jesse notices that his body is on the floor. He taunts Jesse about the truths of their strained marriage and his erectile dysfunction. He then informs her that she has already wasted hours doing nothing, and she begins to suffer from dehydration and fatigue. Jesse miraculously pulls a hand out of a cuff and frees herself. She gloats to Gerald, but then turns around and tells herself, still trapped, that it's easy to escape. Gerald and the self-conscious Jesse tell things about themselves and Gerald that she never had the courage to admit to herself. They make her remember the glass of water over the bed that she can reach but can't bring up to her mouth. The hallucinations remind her of the pendant she put on the shelf, which she rolls into a drinking straw to reach the water. Jesse falls asleep, wakes up in the darkness and sees a tall, deformed, veiled figure revealing a bag of various bones and trinkets. She closes her eyes and says, they're not real. But Gerald appears and says that the figure is death waiting to take her. Gerald begins calling Jesse Mouse, which unsettles her. This triggers a memory of her father, Tom, affectionately calling her mouse and letting her sit on his lap while he masturbated to her when she was 12 while the two watched the solar eclipse. When Jessie loses feeling in her arm, she is taunted by Gerald and Jessie's vision of herself that she never recovered from the assault and that she married a man like her father. Gerald teases Jessie about the disfigured man she saw, whom he calls the man made of moonlight, and points to what he thinks is a bloody footprint on the floor. Jessie remembers cutting her hand the night of the robbery after squeezing a glass too hard when her mother asked her about the eclipse. The adult Jessie smashes the water glass and cuts her wrist in a way that allows her to pull back the skin and slip her bloody hand through the cuff. She drags the bed to the key and frees her other hand. She drinks water and bandages her wrist, but then passes out on the floor from blood loss and exhaustion. When she wakes up, the man of moonlight is standing at the end of the hallway, and she gives him her wedding ring for his jewelry bag. She makes it to her car and drives away, but sees the man in the back seat again. The car crashes into a tree, but people from a nearby house get out. Six months later, Jessie writes a letter to her 12-year-old self, struggling to write with her injured hand. Voiceovers and scenes describe how she faked amnesia throughout the ordeal of being locked up to avoid painful questions. She used part of Gerald's life insurance to start a foundation for victims of sexual abuse. But every night, the man of moonlight still appears before her when she falls asleep. Her wedding ring was never found in the house, and from the news she learned about a serial killer with acromegaly who digs up crypts, steals bones and jewels, and eats the faces of male corpses, this explains why he didn't do anything to Jesse in the house, and also why Gerald's face was disfigured. Jesse arrives at the courthouse as Moonlight Man is being sentenced, and asks for his attention. He quotes what she said before she left the house, suggesting that he was indeed there at the time. When she also sees Gerald's and Tom's face in his place, she says, you are so much smaller than I remember, and walks triumphantly out into the street with the sunlight shining down on her. That was Gerald's game. You thought it was cool? Then subscribe so it's shorted stories again soon. Tailored for you. See you next time.